Hey everybody, do a quick video here on these two once very, well, yeah, we'll say very high-end uh, CD, DVD players and affordable audio or affordable hi-fi, whatever. Sony DVP S7700 and Sony, I can never remember, NS999ES. This one I just got today. 50 bucks. This one I picked up about a year ago for 15 bucks as is at a local Goodwill. And I took a chance, hoping, you know, just maybe there's something wrong with it, easy to fix, and got it home, hooked it up. Nothing wrong with it. Works perfectly fine. Just nobody wants it because it's, it's just an old DVD player, which nobody uses anymore. It's literally worthless for video. I mean, better than no DVD player, but you could also probably go pick up some cans from the side of the highway and turn in the money and get a Blu-ray player from Walmart these days, how cheap they are. Anyway, and well, that and everybody has like Netflix and streaming and streaming and streaming. But uh, yeah, I mean, look at this one. Uh, I don't think this is solid copper, but I do, it could be, a, I think it's more of like a copper powder coat which is still quite neat it's super heavy which makes me believe that there's a lot of copper involved here just the weight of this thing is ridiculous i mean this one's heavy too especially if you're just a, a single disc player but man this thing is just a tank but uh yeah all metal construction aluminum face very thick aluminum face it's got this really unique way the front door opens the whole front drops down and makes way for the tray to come out. Um, does support 24-bit 96 audio, which is only going to be on DVD audio in this case. You put a normal CD in here or here, it's going to play it at 16-bit 44.1, which is fine. But and, you know, then you got like the, this big old piece of you know, copper shielding over the circuit board, and then this really shiny, you know, chrome. Faraday cage shielding over that circuit. And this one was about twelve hundred bucks in nineteen ninety nine. I think this one was about a thousand bucks in two thousand two. And it's just to me and what I've seen from Sony in the past, this seems way more ES than this. Because this this is not an ES, which ES elevated standard or whatever is Sony's high end line. This looks way more ES quality to me than this one. Granted, all that copper being in there and stuff really may not be necessary. I couldn't tell you. Maybe what's going on here, Sony's found a you know obviously a uh, a different way to make a better player, you know, not uh, with a much cheaper chassis because doing this was probably much more expensive. But from everything I found, this one, you know, being newer and overall, it was a better player. This one also does Super Audio CD. The reason I upgraded this one is I want the capability to do Super Audio CD just because. Not that I probably will. Most of my 24-bit audio, high-res audio is already on my computer anyway. So, But, I mean, 50 bucks shipped. I couldn't go wrong. Um, part of it was it's got a dent in the back corner here. You can kind of see it might have been dropped or whatever. Dinged pretty good at one time. But... Overall, the front, the top cover's got some scratches in it, but the front overall, all the lights work, and the front's actually quite clean, you know, what everybody's going to see. And then, you know, just a black back with nice quality connectors, and you got, you got a removable power plug, which is nice. Be careful if that's plugged in. This one does not have a removable, removable power plug, which... I don't know. Does it really matter? It's. I mean, it's nice because uh, when you go to pull some of your equipment out of your rack, if you're like me and you're messing with stuff all the time, it's nice to be able to uh, undo that power plug. Um, yeah, as I said, this one had nothing wrong with it. Got it for 15 bucks at Goodwill. It just happened. I was there sniffing around for some CDs and just happened to come across it. I almost didn't get it because that wide front door, I thought it was a five-disc changer, and I, didn't, I don't do changers. So I actually walked past it, kept going, but I stopped back and I picked it up just to look at it. And the thing weighs like 20 pounds. It's ridiculous. 
and instantly I knew there's, you know, when it's that heavy, something else is going on. I looked into it and I had to get it either way. And, uh, but yeah, it's been great. I'll probably end up selling it. Um, this one, it worked fine, but the main thing was the tray did not want to come out. I mean, it did, it just come out real slow and, um, I got lucky and it was just on the track and the gears underneath this, which I took off. Um, let's see here. See, it still kind of hesitates a little bit, but I think it'll it'll come out of that funk once the more I open and close it and the lubricant spreads out. But yeah, on the bottom of here, there's two uh, uh, tracks with teeth that uh, the motor with its gears kind of run it out and run it back in. And then the uh, look to be the originally had some like white lithium grease on there that just kind of worn off and gotten kind of you know dried up and tacky. So I just put some new synthetic grease on it. On this kind of stuff, I don't believe you ever want to use any kind of petroleum-based grease. You always want to use some kind, kind of like a synthetic or lithium grease um, so it doesn't damage the plastic components. But uh, yeah, I did that, and then that seemed to, seemed to do the trick. So, just got to get it put back together, and I mean, in time, if it doesn't speed up, I can always pull it back apart and try greasing up a few other parts, but I it, I don't think it came out very fast to begin with, so I think it's fine. And like I said, as it gets used more and that grease gets spread around, it'll, it'll kind of come out of it. But the idea behind this is you need a good CD player these days. You don't have to spend much money. You know, I never, when I go looking, I almost never look for high-end CD players. I usually just look for high-end DVD players because... To most people, they just look at it as a DVD player and nobody wants it because it's just a DVD player. But on the flip side, they still make, usually make an excellent CD player. And even if, you know, it's a good start because um, they, you know, you got your optical and coaxial out, which you could just, and then use this as a good transport and then run your coaxial or optical out to a, you know, later on if you want to upgrade to a better DAC, um, you know, and offload the DAC duties, you know, to something else. But both of these I've listened to and have, you know, compared them to, you know, what I get out of my computer and my Emotiva, they still sound really good. I don't I don't have a problem at all with the way they sound. They're both of them seem quite musical. They play CDs really well. Um yeah. So this is kind of like a tip for some I'm not going to say budget because there's budget doesn't mean anything when it comes to money. I mean, some people have a $1,000 budget. Some people have a $250 budget. So I'm going to say affordable CD players or affordable hi-fi. You don't need to spend a ton of money on a CD player anymore. You want to, uh, you know, start piecing together a hi-fi system. And you don't mind CDs because, you know, if you're like me and you're a millennial, as I do stream and I do have a lot of files on my computer, I still... I mean, I had my own CD collection, and I inherited another CD collection, so now I got like 500 CDs, and, you know, uh, some people have vinyl collections or cassette collections. I have CD collections. I'm sure other people still have CD collections, so I like to have a good CD player. And uh, even though a lot of my CDs are on my computer, sometimes I, instead of playing it, you know, the WAV files from my computer, I still, for some reason, I just want to pop the CD in. So, Yeah. From now on, you know, you need to go find a decent uh, CD player. Get out there and look for an old high-end uh, DVD player and see if you can find something for... You should almost always be able to find something for under 100 bucks easy, whether it's Denon, Marantz, Sony, uh, Yamaha. You know, there's a, quite a few brands out there. In the late 90s, the early 2000s, there was the high-end DVD race and all these high-end DVD players coming out that were all actually quite well-made and... Uh, we're also uh, pretty good CD players, and now they're nearly worthless. So, if you like this kind of content, this is what I do. I know a lot of people wouldn't have, may not have bought this because they're worried they couldn't fix it. But other aside of taking the cover off, I've taken like four screws out so I can get to that track underneath and put some grease on it. I'm gonna put it back together, and this thing will be working just fine 
in 10 minutes. Easy fix, you know. It's not always the case. I have been burned. I've spent money on some of this stuff, and the issue with it is something beyond what I can fix, and it costs more than it's worth to actually fix it. So you kind of just, you know, oh well, but um, that's not always the case. I've, that's only that's that happens way less. I usually I come out on top. Knock on wood. So, alrighty, uh, like and subscribe, I guess, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.